Damon Johnson is a man of many hats here in Winnipeg, the city with Canada's largest urban Indigenous population. He's with uh, Winnipeg Executive Council, President of the Aboriginal Council, and sits on countless grassroots boards working closely with urban Indigenous First Nations, Inuit and Métis. Well, he couldn't join us live today, but we did catch up with him for a chat about reconciliation yesterday. Here's some of that. The work that you've been doing, uh, Winnipeg Aboriginal Council, um, but then just as a First Nations guy yourself, it's September 30th. What did that feel like? Well, uh, I was very pleased because I've been a political activist and did it all my life, and so and I don't look for miracles. I look for milestones or I look for steps forward. Sometimes, if they're only incremental, that tells me yes. We are trying to get better. You know what I mean? That's what's important. Did you feel like that was that, that was a milestone? Absolutely, on absolutely. Even though the prime minister appeared to let us down or did let us down, uh, he's one person still. Yes, he's the prime minister, and he's supposed to be an example and a good yeah. example to all of us. But he's only human too. Sometimes our expectations are unrealistic. You know what I mean? So when I look at the prime minister, I look at him not just as the prime minister, mm -hmm. as Justin Trudeau. And who is he? And where has he come from? And what, you know, what does he represent? You know what I mean? Yeah. And you got to be fair and reasonable about that. So yeah. sometimes our our expectations of anyone are, are not reasonable. What do you feel like? I mean, I certainly felt that Canada finally took a moment to listen to some of the things and pay attention to some of the things that we've been talking about today. You know, myself as a journalist, an OT person, a First Nations person, things that we always knew to be true and working towards um, improving things. And it kind of felt like on September 30th that there was a whole bunch of other people who stopped to take notice too. It was a strange feeling. Well, I like an analogy. Eh? And so to me, building relationships is like building a house. If the foundation is faulty, House is going to fall down, right? And so, what is the foundation of Indigenous relationship with other Canadas, with Canada, with other Canadians? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's it's flawed. It's hugely flawed. Like the Indian made us did not recognize us as human beings. We were similar to women. We didn't get the right to vote until the sick. You know what I mean? So this is the realities, and you have to go through those realities, and you have to address those realities mm -hmm. in building a new relationship. Yeah. And you have to build that consensus on, you know, what is the truth? And the truth will be painful. And some Canadians will, well, we know Canadians are a mix too. And so you've got people on the far right who just hate others because they look different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't consider us human beings still. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's that whole panorama of humanity in Canada. And so as leaders, and I'm only one leader, I can only speak for myself and the council, but I say we have to go to the fundamentals of what the relationship has been. We have to admit where the flaws are. We have to have some agreement on that. And then we have to make a commitment to change those things. And so, uh, you know, the Indian Act is still there. I know. 1876, the current version. Before that, you had an act for the gradual civilization of India. You know what I mean? So that's all our history, and Canadians, many of them are far too ignorant of the truth of that. You see what I mean? They, they will look at us and say, why don't you just pull your socks up and change your life for the better? Well, it ain't that simple. And if put yourself in, in that treatment, in that place, what would you be like? Totally. I don't think you'd be much different than us. And I don't say for a minute that we're any better than anybody else, but we're certainly just as good as, and we can be better just like anybody else. And that comes down to the individual and the group level, right? Well, yeah, and it's the relationship building and the fixing some of the damage that was caused. Do you ever get people say, you know, what do I do? They would look up to you. Mm -hmm. You're on, you're everywhere. Yeah. You, you're David Johnson, you're everywhere. You, you, you've been around the block yeah. uh, and people know you. You know, do you get non-Indigenous people say to you, like, Damon, what do I do to rec what do I do to reconcile? What am I supposed to be doing? Do you get people asking that? Well, again, that, that's a tough thing to answer. So there's, there's things that you can do as an individual. So you could ask yourself the question, what is my, you know, do I have any Indigenous friends in my life? Have I ever had an Indigenous friend or family in my house for supper? You know, do I have an Indigenous neighbor? Did I ever talk to him or her? You know what I mean? These are basic, fundamental actions that an individual can answer these questions and then say, well, I don't think that's good. 
I'm going to act to change it. You know what I mean? And we've seen that. There's a, a, an organization called Circles for Reconciliation. And one of their first steps was to host talks on reconciliation in, in individuals' backyards. That's as basic as it gets. You know what I mean? And maybe so that's the building block. I mean, anybody could do that. Well, anybody in your neighborhood could do yeah, that. Many are or, doing or it. Many are doing Let's it. have a social yeah. reconciliation and, and involve them. Like, I have, I have many people in my life who I work with, but very few have ever been to their home, right? Yeah. And, and very few, could I say truly, that they're a friend in the real sense of that word. Because for me, a friend is a very special person. Yeah. I don't call many people my friend. And these are people that I know would be, for me, be there with me no matter what I was facing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, um, what do you see this country being in, you know, 10, 20, 50 years? I truly believe it will be in a better place for all of us in, in, in terms of truth and reconciliation mm -hmm. because I'm seeing signals, n not just in you and me, but in many others, that they're wanting to go there that they have the patience to hear us out, which is really critical, you know what I mean? And like I say, build that understanding of the truth and then say, we got to change this together. And again, Indigenous persons are only 5% of the Canadian population. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's everybody else, right? And we can't do this by ourselves, <laughs> okay? So we've got to, you know, you're looking at, this is not an overnight change. You're looking at as you said, 10, 15, maybe 20 years before you see measurable difference.